Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today, I'm on a spur trail that will take me up to the Appalachian Trail in southwest Virginia near Salem, where I will summit today on an Appalachian Trail point known as Dragon Tooth. And it's pretty famous. It's close to McAfee's Knob, which is one of the most photographed points on the Appalachian Trail. But Dragon's Tooth is uh, one of the favorite local hikes, and it's a great hike when you're on the Appalachian Trail to be able to stop and see that geological structure. Today, I've been looking at the understory, and I want to share with you about the remarkable striped maple. It's a very interesting understory tree that comes down through the spine of the Appalachians. It's better known in the north as moosewood. Uh, it's also known as uh, goosewood. And we'll talk about this tree, how it gets its names, and some interesting facts about it. Stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. So walking up this trail, I noticed a very, very rich understory. The soil here is very acidic, and I saw a lot of huckleberry and high bush blueberry as I was coming up the trail. In addition to striped maple, I saw sassafras, mountain maple, and spice bush. And it's great to see the spice bush here because in a lot of places at lower elevation, it's currently getting crowded out by invasive honeysuckle bush. The so striped maple gets its name by the striping on its bark. Typically, you have vertical white striping on a green background. But here, there's different color variations. And most of the colors in the striping, as you can see here, are much darker. This striping, uh, you'll see in the younger trees. And as a tree gets older, it'll start to lose this. The striped maple is a relatively small tree. It rarely grows above 20 or 30 feet, and so it's a true understory tree. It gets some various names. In the north, it's called moosewood, and it can be found from Maine to Michigan and up through Canada. And it seems that those northern areas are its ancestral home. It's called moosewood because it's a very important browse for moose in the wintertime. The moose will feed on the twigs and buds and strip the bark from the tree as a great nutrient for winter foraging. Here in southwest Virginia, it's eaten by white-tailed deer. And in some places where the deer density is so high, striped maple doesn't even have a chance to regrowth. And it's kind of getting eliminated in some of these high deer density areas. You take a look at the leaf, you can see it has that classic maple leaf kind of look to it. It's strongly curved on the bottom. It has three lobes. And this leaf, it can be very large. And it's much larger, for example, than a silver maple leaf. Plant's other name is goosefoot because the shape of the leaf is said to resemble a goose's foot. One of the really interesting things about striped maple is that it can be a monaceous tree, meaning that it can be either male or female. And the other interesting part of this is that most of the trees here are actually male. You recognize the female trees with female flowers and the fact that it produces this classic winged maple seed, as you can see here. Most of these trees here are male, and scientists have discovered that some of these male trees will actually switch sexes, and they will become female later in life. And it seems perhaps that they respond to stress. Apparently males have better success in living and longevity, but then when they get close to their mature age, some of them will switch to females, which aren't as successful, but this will enable them to pass on their genes to the next generation. Fascinating, complicated stuff. Scientists are still looking into this. Here in Virginia, when I see these trees, I know I'm getting up to higher elevation. And typically I'll see them above 1,500, 16, 1,700, 1,800 feet, and I'll see them all the way up to 3,000 feet. So this tree makes me really feel like I'm in the Appalachian Mountains and I'm getting into high elevation stuff. The trees, like I said, will grow down from the north through the spine of the Appalachians, 
probably because of the climate that's created by the higher elevation, even though it's farther south. So here I am at the summit of Dragon's Tooth. I love this Dragon's Tooth Trail because it has lots of hands-on climbing. I'm hoping to do some episodes from high in the Alps and perhaps even summit at 14,000 feet this summer. I've done a lot of climbing in the past. I'm really looking forward to uh, return to some of these high elevation hikes. And this is no better place in Southwest Virginia to get in shape for climbing in the Alps. Thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and I love hearing from my viewers. Be sure to leave me a comment. Thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.